Hey, Steve with Crimble and the Building Point Teams. Field link tip number eight is actually going to show you how to collect scan data, um, do some net measurements, and export all that to Tecla to create a fabricatable uh, handrail in less than 20 minutes, and that includes scanning as well as then actually drawing that handrail in Tecla. So scans will be collected generally uh, for something this small, um, in this example, in less than a two and a half minutes per scan if you want images uh, and three scans is more than enough to cover uh, this area. So pretty simple kind of uh, staircase where we're going to design in the handrail. Um, that handrail we actually already did, but you can see that's what it'll look like. Uh, so a couple of ways to make everyone's life easier in Tecla. That's what we're going to cover and then we're going to show you how to draw that in Tecla. So one of the first things to do is actually generally trying to align your scan data. Um, here you can actually see uh, where that first scan was taken. Um, I'm going to want to align that so that uh, my zero zero point comes in and it kind of makes sense and everything's in the same orientation. It just makes my life easier in tech light off to move it around. So that's actually going to involve me moving the scan so that my uh, zero zero point or the base point is uh, where I want it to be and then that'll make life easier for the guy working in Tecla and I also want to make sure that the elevation fits there too. So I've already done that like you see here and we have a couple of videos showing that. The other tools that will make my life easier in Tecla is to um, start to take some basic field measurements and I can do this um, actually extract out the full data set in field link very easily. So this is all done on the tablet. Um, but I'm going to extract out the full data to take some base measurements. Like if I wanted to match this stanchion here, how far is this stanchion from uh, the back of this stanchion from that wall? About two, two and five eighths, so two and a half inches. So I'd want to actually probably match that one over here. So I'm going to use that measurement tool as well as the ability here to start creating points um, from the scan data by just actually selecting it. So I can see this is where my second stanchion is. I could actually just come in and create a point where that is where that lives. So um, life becomes a lot easier if I do that. Let me zoom back in here um, because then I have something in Tecla that I can pull to. So here, take off uh, the perspective here. There's my second stanchion um, and I can drop in another point. So what that'll look like, I'll probably drop someone on all elevations that allows me to pull off of that. I'll have a bunch of kind of measurements like this as well as where my stanchions are. Uh, within Tecla, that'll, I could trace the point cloud, but it's generally a little bit easier to have um, starting points. So then I'd want to export this scan data to Tecla as a non-gridded E57. If I was going to AutoCAD or, or Revit or uh, any Autodesk program, I'd use an RCP, but for Tecla, I'd use an E57 non-structured. Non um, let me rename that to two and it's a very quick, pretty small uh, file format. And then I'd also want to export the uh, DWG of all those points as uh, just so I can bring those in as well too. So that's also very easy to export and then load both this up either to connect or to my thumb drive. So scanning time, about nine minutes, taking these measurements, probably another five or so, and then we'll go over to Tecla to show you how to start using that information there. So once that data is on my C drive, um, I'm going to want to attach the point cloud, the E57, with the, um, in the cloud area and then attach that DWG and you can see everything came in at the uh, correct base point and actually uh, orientation. Um, it's easier to use clip planes and you actually have to, to use clip planes within Tecla, you have to have a uh, component to pull off of, so create a generally like a, 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 a little column. And then because everything's already in the correct orientation, I can pretty quickly um, use my preset views to create elevation and uh, column lines. Um, and then you can actually see there, I can go in and start to actually design those stanchions to match the same height as the other uh, handrail that is there. Um, I can pull in off those points and that's where it makes it a little bit easier. I can trace in just off of the point cloud there, but having those separate points does make it a little bit easier. So um, create one tube, uh, it's just a, a steel tube, standard one, right? Um, I could, if I uh, threw in a stringer, could have the automatic railing uh, application tool, but because I didn't have it started, I'll use this one. And then um, essentially 
create those stanchions as they would sit in the correct elevation with the correct height and the correct X and Y. Once I have those stanchions, I can use the application tool. See so here, you, you can see they match. I can use the application tool um, to then create the handrail. I will adjust a little bit of that tubing, um, then go to that railing, select it, and then bam, automatically created that handrail to fit with the correct elevation. Um, it is not our artistic or as beautiful as the one across the way. I could use other applications or if I was a better uh, Tecla user to actually completely match it. Here you can then see I can run in um, a clash inspection um, and look at the different, uh, actually colorize the point cloud for the distance. Oh, it, away, it is away from uh, the model. So I can actually start to generally view where that could clash. And um, one thing you'll notice here, I didn't select uh, that uh, railing, but I can see that is just obviously a problem when I was running that clashing. So what I will do is actually come back here and um, select it this way. Uh, that's what the clashing tool will do. You can see I can change that and then start to see how close is that. It's actually within a quarter inch, um, probably too close for me to want to design something there. Um, I would essentially want to move that up. Uh, I could get this down to about an eighth if I, if I really wanted to, um, but for something like this, I probably wouldn't. Uh, next beautiful thing I could do is actually just create a report of the material of the cut list. And then I can send this to the shop. I can send it to PowerFab, have all this made very quickly um, and very easily. So with Trimble FieldLink, the X7, X9 scanner, um, all the lines and elevations come in. Uh, correct. It will collect. They, the scanner will collect a couple million points and very quickly, and then you just cover the entire site. Um, with that, I can design stanchion rails, stringers, stairs. Um, because the scanner self levels, it means it, everything's going to be perfect on level, essentially. Uh, communication is also huge because I have all these points. I know I have all the uh, field measurements. I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, and I don't need to go back out. So I have all the field measurements in one trip very quickly. And then that ensures my timing and fabrication are perfect. Um, I shouldn't need to uh, refabricate, recut, do any additional field work and minimize my time on site for those measurements as well as on the install. So please reach out to your nearest building point representative for a demo on how to use FieldLink uh, with the field software and export that data directly to Tecla, a very easy workflow. Thanks and have a great day.